it's quiet, it's <laughs> silent, you don't feel like you're really moving at the speed at which you are, um, and you can see the glorious British countryside. Mm. And uh, I mean, that was a great show. I mean, uh, any, any more, any more uh, plans to do some more of the um, the, the hot air balloon gardens? Not at, not at the moment. No, no. I mean it, it's a phenomenally precarious business with the weather. I know, I know. I, 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 some friend of mine bought me, a, or some friends of mine bought me a balloon trip, and it, I think it took me four years to actually yeah, go up. Yeah, I mean we was extremely lucky. Um, we only lost two days, which yeah. we picked up elsewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, <laughs> it puts you under an awful lot of pressure. Yeah, um, yeah I, I know you're, you're coming to the area uh, in in a, in a little while. Well, back in January, uh, Wednesday the twentieth of January, you're coming to the Radlett Centre. You're going to do a show, and it's really it's a one-off show, isn't it? Because there's no tour or anything else. No, I mean, no, it's, it's 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 a one-off visit there. Yeah, one-off visit there, and it, it's a, it's a it's called Life and Times of a Gardener. Mm. And then, you're, so you're going to be talking to people about your, well, well basically what you're talking to me today about. Yeah, yeah, basically about the thrills and spills of being in hot culture, um, my life in the media, um, and then the, after the break there's a opportunity for people to ask questions. Um, as most people know, I'm a member of the Gardener's Question Time panel, Radio 4, mm. and um, quite used to answering questions. And people actually like their gardening questions answered. Yeah, I mean... What's the oddest question you've ever had? Oh, um, <laughs> or two or three of them if we've got we've got we've got well, time. I mean, sometimes you get asked a question that is so um, there. I mean, there was one that was asked on the panel about the South African thing. Well, it changed its name about ten times anyway, and none of us recognised the name that the guy was using. But it's not in cultivation. Uh, it never had been in cultivation, and you know it. it it's one of those questions that sometimes people try to be a bit clever, to be honest. Yeah, try and trip you up. Well, not trip you up, but just trying to sort of show how clever. But, you know, when a plant's not in cultivation and it's as rare as hell, what real interest is that to the general member of the public? And what Gardener's Question Time tries to do is to engage the wide variety of problems and issues that the man in the street's going to mm. uh, be interested in. We're not there as... You know, botanists, we're not there as, as great erida experts. We're there to help the man in the street. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that works well. I mean, it, uh, uh, Gardener's Question Time is hugely popular. Well, it's been there an awful long time, and it's got a phenomenal following. And it's an institute. I mean, it's like the arts, yeah. it's like Coronation Street. You know, Gardener's Question Time, it's been there for practically, well, since the 50s, so 1952, I think. Um, so, you know, it's been there a very, very long time. In fact, we're in our 70th year next year. 70th year in 2016. That yeah. is unbelievable, isn't it? Seclo Sounds is the community radio station for Milton Keynes, producing a variety of programmes covering music, health, business, sports, faith, the arts, entertainment and much more. For more information about our programmes, visit the programme and schedule pages of our website, seclosounds.org, as well as our replay page to hear what these programmes have to offer. Whose garden was this? Must have been lovely Did it have flowers? I've seen pictures of flowers And I'd love to have smelled one Whose river was this? You say it ran freely Blue was its color I've seen blue in some pictures And you tell me you've been there Ah, tell me again, I need to know The forest had trees, the meadows were green The oceans were blue And birds really flew Can you swear that was true? Whose grey sky was this? Was it a blue one? Nights there were breezes I've heard records of breezes And you 
tell me about one whose forest was this, and why is it empty? They say there were bird songs and squirrels in the branches, and why is it silent? Ah,、oh, tell me again. I need to know. The forest had trees. The meadows were green. The oceans were blue, and birds really flew. Can you swear that was true? And whose garden was this? It must have been lovely. Did it have flowers? I've seen pictures of flowers, and I'd love to have smelled one. Woke up and the toilet was overflowing. Must call the plumber. Realised the kids needed swimming lessons as it's all got out of control. Luckily the old windows gave out, so we all floated outside. Must get onto the glazers. And now the garden looks atrocious. Now what was the number for that landscaper? Because you never know when a potential customer needs you, get yourself listed in your local flyer, the local business directory. Your local flyer, bringing businesses to your fingertips. Here we are. That was Tom Paxton and whose garden was this? You're listening to the Sticks Radio Show here on Sex Life Sounds. My guest today, Christine Walton. Away from the gardening, I mean, and, and the writing and the TV presenting, of course, of the one show you do fairly regularly, I believe. Mm, yeah.、Um, what do you do? Sort of unwind. What do you have? Do you have another hobby?、Um, I do a lot of walking, and I have a dog, and I like music. I play woodwind instruments, so、um, you know, I keep myself amused. Bit of woodwind. So, will it, are you? Are we? Are we? Will we, will we be?、Uh, will we be getting the woodwind down at Radlett Centre or not?、Um, no. No. Oh, shame. Because we'll sell a few more tickets like that. <laughs> 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 so that, that, that's what that's what you'd like to do. I mean, obviously, the sort of the, I guess the walking and the dog walking sort of run hand in hand with gardening and. and it the, does because I'm out in the countryside, so, enjoying the countryside. I've got some lovely walks around here,、um, and just love being outside and enjoying nature. Okay, well, I, I did prime you before we came on、uh, the sh- before we came on air this morning about some gardening tips. What you can do in the garden in February and March. Well, February and March is the busiest time in the garden. You know, it's seed sowing, it's land preparation, it's getting everything ready for that big long sweep that's ahead of you. So you know, it's making sure everything's clean. You've got plenty of composting. You've got all your plant labels. Seed sowing. If you're starting as early as February, that needs to be done under glass or with some protection and some heat. So make sure that you've got a bright light situation that the glass house has been washed down, or the window sills and the windows are clean. And then we get into you know dealing with those seedlings outside. It's land prep, so if you haven't prepared the land ready for planting, it's the time now to get it dug over and prepared. Dig plenty of organic matter in there. So you know lots and lots and lots to be done in those two months. And you just got to hope that got, the weather's kind to you. There's no snow or anything like that. Well, you? you know the last few years down here, it's been fine. Hasn't it's, it? So,、um, yeah, it's been, been、uh, a real issue. The south of England doesn't get the bad weather like the north of England. Well, they're certainly having a bad time at the moment up there. They are. I mean, yeah, we've had. Yeah, the weather's not. Weather's not been kind to the north of England. I go up there fairly regularly, and、um, yeah, it's not so good. But never mind.、Um, Have you ever had any disasters, either on the radio, on TV, or in your gut, in you know, in your gardens? Well, I mean, it depends on what you call disasters. I mean, the, <laughs> you get the odd year when things don't grow particularly well. Well, that's、mm-hmm. generally down to climate rather than much else.、Mm-hmm. Um, no, not really. I mean, I think you know, if you garden steadily, and as a professional gardener, you know, the things can go wrong. But I've never had any major disasters. No, no. we're not going to see you pop up on it's all right in the night or anything like I that. I don't think so. No. <laughs> Well, I was just hoping, you know what I mean. No, sorry, pretty boring like that. No, I mean I, I corpse terribly, and、uh, <laughs> so it, I, I will be on there a lot. It's a, it's a bit of a surreal question, this one. You're having a dinner party tonight,、mm. and you can invite four guests, living or dead. Who would you invite, and why? Oh, oh, now that's an interesting question. I know.、Um, Jeffrey Smith, who was a gardener、um, based in Harrogate. 
he had a phenomenal sense of humour, was extremely funny, um, but extremely knowledgeable. Um, I would like to interview Trevor MacDonald because he's had a phenomenally interesting life coming over to this country as a young man and obviously doing very, very well in the media. Um, <coughs> who else would I like? David Attenborough, for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. um, and my fourth would be probably somebody like... Um, who would I... A woman, who would I like to interview? Helen Mirren. Because, like Helen Mirren? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, would be a fun, that would be a fun dinner party, wouldn't it? Well, it would, yeah. Basically, you know, because she's had a phenomenally interesting life. Uh, they have. Them. All of them are, are quite interesting people, and uh, I can see why you'd have all of them round. I mean, Trevor's is an, a national institution, isn't he? Absolutely. Uh, he's you know, a... and all of those people that have lived very full lives, um, you know, are going to be interested in, there's going to be something that you can talk to them about. Yeah, I think that's, that's a good idea. And uh, What would you cook them? Um, I would probably do um, probably one of my casseroles because one of the things I hate about cooking anything really flash is that you're spending all your time actually in the you know in the kitchen Stirring doing it. the food. <laughs> Whereas if you do a really nice casserole or something that's already been prepared, you've then got time to sit and actually enjoy their company. Mm. There's nothing worse than throwing a dinner party and spending all the time in the flipping cook you know in the no, kitchen faffing about cracking about, mucking about. Yeah, I agree. Worried about, oh, you know, my souffle hasn't done the right thing. Oh. Do something simple that's really good and heartwarming and then, you know, sit and enjoy the company of these people you've invited yeah. round. Chick, chuck it in the oven and leave it. That's my Absolutely. philosophy. Min, 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 minimalistic as possible. I'm quite happy with that. Um, you've done all these things. We mentioned the hot air balloon in an, 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 an TV work, the amount of books you've written, um... Is there anything you'd like to do? Have you got anything you thought, oh, I'd love to do that? I'd like to walk across Turkey. Would you? Yes, I would. All of it? Yep. I'd like to start in March um, in the west and go across the high plateaus, looking at the flowers as they come and go, and come out in the east on the Russian border in late September. So you, to you... see the flowers coming and going and flushing and the different altitudes and the different latitudes, meet the people, walk the Turks. Are, the, the rural Turks are fascinating people and are very um, warm and welcoming and fascinating. So, yes, that's an ambition I'd like to do. So, hopefully you're, you're going to pitch that to a TV company. They're not interested. They're not? I'm, I'm actually <laughs> surprised. I was a boring to TV companies, remember? Oh, well, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't agree necessarily, but never mind. Uh, you've, you've, I mean, you've travelled around the world. You've done garden trips, field trips across the world, mm. China, America, Asia, South Africa, most of the places. Is there anywhere in the world you'd like, to, apart from Turkey, which you just mentioned, is there anywhere in the world you'd either like to go or you, you know, you'd like to go? Um, one of the places I'd, I'd like to visit is Siberia, mainly mm. because it's unspoiled. Yeah, and it's a bit chilly there as well. Well, it is, but, you know, there, there is a summer flora. It's a very limited window, um, but Fabir is on the list. Yeah, that's a, I mean, I, I must admit, I've got a yearning to go to Iceland and not the shop. Mm. Um, and, it, and people say to me, you're mad. I said, well, no, it's just some... I, I've got this yearning to go there. Yeah, well, I think, you know, different things appeal to different yeah. people, don't they? And, you know, I mean, certain people have said to me, you know, what on earth are you going to South Africa for? Oh. Um, you know, because it's a stunningly beautiful country. Oh, amazing. beautiful. People, they've got fantastic wine. Shame they can't sort out the politics, but well, like, that, that's... hey ho, you know, we don't uh, do that clever here. So, no, well, it, you know, it, it, every country in the world has got something. Yeah, I mean, I, I've, I've been fortunate enough to go to South Africa and I've driven up the garden route when it's in full bloom, and it is stunning. Well, I, I tend not to do that because, it, you know, it, it's similar to a lot of other things that you can see around yeah. the world. I tend to, when I'm visiting Africa, go off into the mountains and the sticks and the jack and the birds mm. and the hotten tops and Lesotho and um, that sort of area. So I'm, I'm off the beaten You're track. Off the be I must admit, I've been up Table Mountain and I couldn't believe the flora at the top there. Well, the floor, yeah, I mean, that bit of South Africa is amazing. But, it is. you know, there are more, it's one of the richest florist kingdoms in the world, mm. and it is an amazing, amazing area. Mm. Well, almost out of time. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just quickly run through the, I'm going to ask you one more question, and then I'm going to run through where people can see it. Now, we're in 2016. What does 2016 hold for Christine? Hopefully, as much as everything that I've done in the past, just building on that, enjoying travelling, enjoying meeting people, 
giving advice, doing what I do, so more of the one show, more of what other people throw at me. Um, <laughs>